one of the most effective ways to work out when you're a woman is powerlifting. It's actually one of the most effective forms of strength training to boost your metabolism. Help you burn body fat. And yes, sculpt the body. Powerlifting should not be avoided. It's a phenomenal way to train. I love this. Yeah. Yeah, I really do like this advice. And it's something that um, I didn't start giving to my female clients until later on in my career and shifting in that direction. I think partially because I never really identified as a power lifter. And so it wasn't like a, a, a sport that I was really into, but the part, and we talk about this on the show all the time that I think is so valuable. And I don't, I don't think this is just to women. I think men and women get a lot of value for this is just to focus on getting stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're, we're marketed to so much, both men and women, women, especially that th this look, you know, it's right. all about this look. It's all about this look. And when that drives your behaviors, around nutrition and exercise for most people it drives them in the wrong direction That's right, yeah. and so i love sending any of my clients in this direction of like listen we are just going to focus on getting strong because that in itself is difficult it's mm -hmm. difficult enough to program correctly get adequate rest feed the body nutritionally so it has the tools and the the building blocks to go build muscle and build strength and yet you're not focusing on the scale and getting all weary about worried about what the what the mirror show it's like i'm just my goal is to get strong i love that yeah. i love that it's more popular now i know back uh back when i was training clients it was less of a thing and it was always my favorite uh, time to to introduce the lower rep um, count and, and and do like three to five reps and and really show them like if you are focused on just getting strong and being able to like add a bit more load it's a completely different mindset but also too it's just like it was so empowering and and I got the same response from basically every like female client I had was this, just like what it did for them this was my go to uh, for female clients towards the back half of my career. And it was so effective. And a lot of it has to do with just how women are marketed to in the health and fitness space. It's all about losing weight, getting lean, maybe sculpting. Nobody talks about the benefits of strength or what that translates into. So women typically, if you ask them, why do you work out? They'll, you know, they'll say, you know, I want to look better. I want to be more fit. You know, maybe I want to get stronger, but they're not really chasing strength. When you chase strength, then they start to get all those other things that they had wanted. And, and the reason why strength is such a great pursuit is because it's hard to do a lot of things wrong and get stronger. So in other words, mm -hmm. if you're not eating properly, you're probably not going to get stronger. If your sleep isn't that great, you're probably not going to get stronger. If your stress levels are too much or you can't manage the stress that you have, you're probably not going to get stronger. If your training program is off, you're not going to get stronger. It's a wonderful pursuit to chase because if you're consistently getting stronger, you're doing a lot of things right. Now, you don't have to necessarily be perfect, but you can lose weight and do a lot of things wrong. And of course, the weight that you lose on the scale is you know half muscle, half body fat, or sometimes mostly muscle. You can look in the mirror, which is a subjective thing, see yourself getting smaller and be happy because the scale's going down. You can ignore energy. You can ignore health because clothes are fitting looser. But if you're getting, if you're not getting stronger, then then that's it. Bottom line, you have to fix something. And if you are getting stronger, you're probably doing everything right. And and the other side of it was, it took my female clients away from the subjective aspect of looking at themselves in the mirror, judging how they look. Like yep. it was, we're just going to get stronger for three months. We're not going to focus on anything else. And that was very freeing for them because. They stop, and then what was cool about it was within the three month period, they got what they wanted. They're like, "Oh my That's, god, I look amazing!" Mm -hmm. That was the part for me that I think really I changed the way I started. Then became like a thing that I like. Oh, I didn't care what your goal was. I was recommending we go this direction, and that was also when I started to adopt this idea of like, "Hey, even though you want to lose thirty or forty pounds, I'm <clears> not going to restrict. I'm going to add to your diet first. All that was all part of like the same transition for me. And so helping, uh, you know, helping my female clients 
focus on that, even though they came to me and said, oh, Adam, I want a smaller waist and I want a butt. And I want all these things, even though that was what they came to me originally for, getting them convinced to follow this let's get stronger protocol and do these big lifts and focus on kind of a powerlifting type of routine, they ended up getting the results that they ultimately yeah. wanted. And they got it by eating more foods than they thought they ever were going to. It was yeah. like such a Great such a combo, game changer to things. get people to connect these dots and and very empowering too so Super. not just great that you hit your your physical goals or your weight you know body fat loss goal but to see how empowered my clients felt after they went through that process yeah you know a, a good um kind of way to understand this is even if i had a female client that said she wanted to build some muscle usually it was in the butt right so usually they would say if they wanted to build it was typically the butt area like i want to get a bigger butt i want to build it if you follow that up with, well, how strong do you want to get? They always kind of confuse. Say, well, I, I mean, I don't really care if I get too strong. I just want to build my butt. The right answer is I want to get as strong as possible mm -hmm. because the strength is what translates to the muscle. As you get stronger, you will build more muscle. It's just a fact. There's no better predictor of muscle growth than strength. Nothing. Uh, now, of course, eventually that starts to slow down, but we're talking five years down the line. And that's by that point, you're pretty advanced. You've been very consistent for a long time. Otherwise, like if you want to build muscle, just chase strength. If you chase gaining muscle, then you're going to be playing this weird game of trying to figure out if I'm gaining muscle or is it, you know, water weight or what's going on. It was just, and, and again, it was just, it was objective. You either added five pounds to the bar or you didn't. This is why I, when I, back in the day, when I first started writing kind of the blueprints of the first maps program. I borrowed a lot from the strength training, um, com competitive strength training side of resistance training because they had the best workouts, bodybuilding workouts, fat loss workouts. They were all, there wasn't really any science involved in their programming, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, anything where you had to actually objective, objectively perform. The coaches designed the best workouts because you hit the stage you either lift the weight or you don't. It either worked or it didn't work. And so they have the best programming as well. Well, you're highlighting one of the things that got me so excited about talking to you before we ever really met in person about MAPS Anabolic when you sent it over to me. At that time in my career, I had figured this out for my female clients, and it was something that I was already implementing in their programming. And when I looked at MAPS Anabolic, the thing that MAPS Anabolic has in, in common with power lift or power lifting in general is, and I think it's this is the number one factor of why this is this is so uh, beneficial for women to follow a powerlifting routine, is it focuses on the three big lifts. Yeah, and we had just came out of a decade or two of most people, both men and women, neglecting those lifts, and definitely women. I did not have women squatting and deadlifting, overhead pressing, bench pressing, heavy weight. That was no. not common. It still isn't common in the gym today. And so I remember when I saw you sent over, and that's the cornerstone of MAPS Anabolic is centered around those incredible lifts because we know it builds the most muscle. It does. Yeah, that's one of the that's the number one reason why powerlifting um, is a great way to train is the three <clears throat> exercises or the three movements that are done in powerlifting competitions are three of the best strength training exercises you could possibly do. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Powerlift. If you want to win it, here's what you got to do. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Now, everybody else, in today's episode, we talk about why women should powerlift. So we've put MAPS Powerlift on sale. It's half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. Or you can go to mapspowerlift.com and use the code WOMENPOWER for the 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. The bench press, the deadlift, and the squat. All three of them hit major muscle mass in the entire body. All three of them, if you get stronger, you don't just develop one muscle or two muscles. You develop entire swaths of the body, okay? And in order to get stronger at those three exercises, because you might think if you're not experienced or you're not familiar with powerlifting, you think, well, that's all I do is those three exercises. No, no, no. Competition is trying to lift in those three exercises the most weight. But to train for those three, there are other exercises that support those lifts. So you do end up doing things like pull-ups or pull-downs, overhead presses. Mm. You do end up doing exercises like, you know, stiff-legged deadlifts and leg curls and stuff like that because they support 
those three lifts. But the goal is they pick those three, what are called gross motor movements in competition. And so if you're, for example, if somebody added 15% more weight to, let's say their laterals or their barbell curls, okay, or their tricep pushdown, they'll see some muscle development, not a, not a ton. You add 15% more weight to a barbell squat, a deadlift or a bench press, you're going to see a lot more results because it's such a big movement. They're just the three best exercises. We like to call, we like to talk about the, the top five. The top five would also include, let's say an overhead press and mm -hmm. maybe something that includes some kind of rotation or a row, but these are the top three right They're here. They're all multi-joint lifts. Yeah. And, and the, the <coughs> greatest gain is like how much you, you can tap into muscle recruitment and to increase the amount of force output. And so you're actually able to recruit uh, more muscle fibers throughout your entire body with, with these lifts uh, in comparison to a lot of single joint exercises. So it's it's literally the difference between just one musical instrument versus an entire symphony. And it's it's I just look at it that way because we keep talking about it as like the loudest signal and it's literally the loudest output you can produce in terms of like the exercise spectrum. And so this is why we, we always tend to program these specific lifts in different variations variations in all of our programming. Yeah. It's so along those lines, <clears throat> if a muscle has, is made up of muscle fibers. And one of the things that uh, will dictate, I guess, how well the muscle gets developed is, are you able to recruit all of the muscle fibers in that muscle? And the heavier a weight is, the more intense it is, the more likely you are to recruit more muscle fibers. Now those muscle fibers are controlled and communicated to by the central nervous system. The central nervous system ultimately decides how many muscle fibers are going to be activated. Okay, so here's the kicker. An individual muscle will activate more muscle fibers when other muscles are also activated. This is how the body works. So if you were to squeeze something as hard as you could with your right hand, but keep the rest of your body relaxed, you would generate less force than if you squeezed with your whole body while squeezing your hand. Even though your hand is being measured, you would see a noticeable increase in the amount of power output because the central nervous system fires harder when the whole body is turned on. So what does this have to do with those exercises? Those exercises activate the entire body. So yes, a barbell squat is a leg exercise, but unlike a leg press where the rest of my body is kind of chilling and I'm just moving my legs or especially like a leg extension, I have to hold and support the bar on my back. I have to tense up my upper back, my core, stay stable. My feet and ankle have to be activated. And when I'm pushing heavy weight, all my muscles have to turn on, even though the prime movers are my lower body. So what does that mean? It's going to develop my legs more than if I didn't turn on all those other muscles. This is even more important for beginners and intermediate lifters. Now, when you're super advanced, you start to develop the ability to activate lots of muscle fibers without having to turn everything else on. This is why advanced lifters can do isolation exercises yeah. and get pretty good results. But if you've been working out for less than a couple of years, you're not going to activate all those muscle fibers unless you start to unless you turn on the other muscles and this is why gross motor movements are so effective that's why these these three exercises in powerlifting are so effective well it's crazy it's the benefit is it increases that capacity <clears throat> now for your other exercises your single right. joint exercises so it's like you squeeze more out of those once you learn you teach the body how to do that with uh with the overall you know multi joint exercises you could go back to your regular kind of lifting and and realize like how much stronger you can you can uh, get at that. Totally. I also like training for powerlifting. We said this earlier because the goal is objective. Yeah. One of the biggest challenges with fitness, and this is what I communicate to personal trainers all the time, is that the client is typically um, focused on subjective goals. Now, why are subjective goals or or let's say landmarks in their training? Why is that so frustrating? It's subjective. If you've ever met somebody who thinks that they're too fat, but you look at them and you say, you're not fat at all, or maybe you did this to yourself. If you've ever looked at a picture of yourself from 10 years ago and you're like, oh my God, I looked amazing. And then you realized, oh my God, I thought I looked terrible back then. I looked so good, right? Um, it's because your subjective view of yourself is highly influenced by your confidence, your state of mind, whether or not you're on social media all the time, who you're comparing yourself to, mm -hmm. the partner you're with, your whatever. Yeah. It's so subjective that your subjective opinion can change even though your objective body doesn't change at all. That makes fitness 
something that is super ineffective. This is why people will overtrain, over diet, hurt themselves, train in ineffective ways, ignore the fact that they feel like garbage. We talk to people all the time on the show when they're ignoring all these signs that they're doing too much and eating too little. It's because they're just focused on subjective goals, which again are in the, in your mind, right? Strength is objective. You got, did you get stronger? Then you're doing the right thing. Oh, you didn't get stronger. We're doing something wrong. It's black or white. Doesn't matter what you think you see in the mirror, or whatever. You can't imagine the weight to be heavier. It's either heavier or not. And so it tends to point you in the right direction. And I love that about powerlifting because when I would get clients, I could put them on this subjective path and not have to have all these conversations around their subjective, uh, you know, opinion of themselves, which was very challenging Dude, to do. Subjective goals are extremely difficult for a super advanced, knowledgeable person to gauge. I, I share this all the time about my journey of competing and how difficult it was to be able to make sure like, wait a second, I, I swear I look like I'm putting weight on or oh, it's not, I'm not losing, it's not moving. And I'm like measuring, tracking, weighing everything. So just a map, because I'm looking at the mirror, I'm looking at the mirror or I'm looking at the scale, which both those things are subjective. <clears throat> yeah. The scale can stay the same, go up, go down. And it does, it can mean the opposite of what you think it is. So, and that's somebody who I would consider myself an advanced lifter. Who's very knowledgeable around the subject. So you had to go back to your numbers. I, I mean, I remember you talking to me about this where you'd look in the mirror, you'd be like, I don't, oh, I look different. But then you go back to what I ate, what I drink. And you were so meticulous that you could override your subjective opinion. Yes. You're like, no, 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 this, this, these are numbers. I must be holding water or less water or whatever. That, yeah. The, and the, and the, I st even though I, I saw that I'd go like what the, what the conversation would go like this would be like, okay, I, I need to adjust though. I'm looking, it's, this is not looking right, but I'm everything I'm doing. I know I've written it down. I've tracked it. This is right. Okay. Let me give it three to four days and let's see what happens. Yeah. And so I would be patient, stay the course. And then in three to four days, I'd see my, the mirror change or the scale would change. And there would be enough to be like, okay, I'm all right. Stay on the course. But my point is that you're talking about somebody who's really advanced and yet still is a mind fuck for me. So having a client that, that you have focus on something that is as, as clear as it can get, just telling them, okay, did we get stronger or not right. as your North star is the simplest way to keep them. And you, you brought it up as we opened up and started this. I mean, good luck getting stronger, having uh, you know poor sleep and uh, not eating enough calories or hitting protein intake. Like if you consistently miss those marks, you're not, not going to get stronger. No. You're going you're to feel it seen in the gym. So constantly trying to tweak all those things in order to get stronger really puts you in the right path of getting to whatever your goal is. Even if you have a subjective goal, like I want to look cute in this bikini, like still focusing on getting strong is the better path to get you there long-term because ultimately we know if you get stronger, you build muscle. If you build muscle, you speed up the metabolism. If you speed up the metabolism, it makes it that much easier to slim down and That's lose right. your body fat. You mentioned nutrition. <clears throat> one of the One of the biggest challenges with uh, with women for me when I used to train women was getting them to eat enough to support and fuel the type of things that we were working for in the gym. They were constantly trying to eat less, mm -hmm. constantly careful with how much they were intaking because their goal oftentimes was fat loss. But what would happen is they would go too low. It would make it very hard for us to accomplish what we were trying to accomplish. And we didn't get the metabolism boosting. We didn't get the muscle building. We didn't get the sculpting. And so it's kind of this, this kind of battle. Well, Training for strength encourages eating in a surplus. It encourages eating enough protein. In fact, it's so effective at doing this. I learned this from a therapist. I, uh, two, I used to train this couple and I trained them for a while. Then they brought me their daughter who was recovering anorexic. And before I trained her, I remember I called the parents and I said, okay, I'll train her, but I'd like to talk to the therapist first because I want to know what I can and can't talk about. And I want to make sure I don't, you know, I, I help your daughter and don't put her in the wrong direction. The therapist told me, don't talk about body weight. Don't talk about body fat percentage. Don't talk about any of that stuff. Just focus on performance. And a light bulb went off. Of course, mm -hmm. if we just focus on getting stronger, I'm, this, that's, that's not only is it not triggering for her in terms of like, you know, restrict your eating, it's going to encourage her to eat more because if she's not getting stronger and if she wants to get stronger, which eventually I convinced her to, to want to get stronger, she knew she had to eat more and it got her to eat 
the right amount of protein and appropriately. That's this is yeah. one of my favorite reasons. It's kind why. of liberating. Very liberating. It's one of my favorite reasons why this type of training is so effective. Because mm-hmm. especially when I'm trying to get someone to build muscle, so we could get the metabolism boost and all that stuff. If somebody's afraid of gaining weight and they're constantly watching the scale, oh, mm. it's such a battle back and forth. This but it was, was such a hard one. I mean, to 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 because that mentality of coming in and always having to be um, a certain amount of calories per day, like the, a lot of my clients knew, like, okay, if I eat a little bit more than this, you know, my body's going to change, and I'm going to have this and that happen to me, and to to be able to go through and, and really trust the process that, you know, I'm going to, I'm lifting different. My mentality is different. You know, the, my body's requiring more nutrients and uh, to see them uh, go through that process and see it actually change them for the better. And like how liberating that was for them. It was fantastic. Cause now, you know, we're not worried about the scale on a day to day uh, basis. Like we're just focused on one objective and that's just to get strong. And, and then all the benefits uh, you receive and it reveals itself, uh, yep. you know, through that process. This is why I don't like the law of thermodynamics type of conversation that so many fitness professionals have about, oh, you just got to eat less and move more. Because one of the things that I experienced in my career was starting to break down these diets and look at, you know, because the first thing I'd have yeah. them do is just show me where you're at. And okay, these people were struggling, not only these people struggling with weight loss, but they were malnutrition. Like they weren't getting enough of these nutrients. We were, we were not getting enough fiber. We weren't getting enough protein. We weren't getting enough healthy fats. Like we're, we're missing on all these things that your body wants and needs. And so for me, that, that was the first kind of light bulb that went off. Okay. Here I'm switching my clients over to getting stronger. Oh, look, they're missing all these, you know, macro and micronutrients. Let's start thinking of ways to just to add to the diet. Let's add to the diet and let's, and then let's, the way we measure if we're on the right track is performance in the gym. Let's not worry about the scales, ups and downs, stuff like that. Let's, let's speak to health and being stronger and sleeping better and more energy. And so the conversation started to shift in that direction. And then as I would add things in the diet, that would be the feedback I wanted from my clients to see, are we heading down the right path? And ultimately, what was so great about this was if you did this correctly, they're slowly building muscle and it's getting more and more difficult for them to eat more food. And naturally, they would start to lean out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's it's amazing how, how effective this is for coaches and trainers to focus on this aspect versus what you think you're supposed to do, cut. which is… Yeah. Cut calories, cut, yeah. cut, cut. It just because naturally makes you want to. Yeah, this person's it. 40, 50 pounds yeah. overweight. That sounds like I understand if you're or like a new coach right now listening to this, it has yeah. to be like, what? You mean to tell me you get someone who wants to lose 40, 50 pounds and you're telling me I should put them on a powerlifting routine mm-hmm. and add things to their diet? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that sounds so counterintuitive, but it, it's it's so the right strategy for long-term success for this. Client. It is. You're building the engine uh, so they could bur- look, uh, by the way, there's, there's obviously more to this than just eating in a surplus. I'm not encouraging my clients to go eat junk food and garbage to do this. We're aiming for protein. I'm aiming for whole natural foods and I'm telling them to eat more. I'm adding to the diet. Now what happens when this person who normally eats fast food at this time of day, I tell them to eat. No, I want you to eat, you know, eight ounces of, of steak. I want you to eat a couple of rice, whatever. They're not going to eat both. They tend to eat what I tell them to eat. It's very satiating. Yeah. They're getting the protein that they need. Um, then they go to the gym and it fuels their performance. Yeah. So it, it's much more complicated than just that encourages eating in a surplus, but it definitely discourages eating too little or not getting enough nutrients. If you're not eating enough, you're not going to get stronger. Yeah. And if this is you You'll and you're feel scared. Weak. Yeah. And if you're scared, if you're constantly scared, oh, I, know the, I know they say to build muscle and, and I know that's I'm supposed to do that, but I'm really scared. Don't weigh yourself. Just try and get stronger. It's it'll all, it'll it, push you in that direction. It's also a really important for coaches and trainers, psychological hurdle you help your client get over. Totally. Most of these clients that they have yo-yo dieted and extreme dieted their whole life, and you kind of flipping it on its head and saying, we're going to add things into this diet. I'm not going to focus on cutting from you and restricting from you. I'm going to focus right. on putting these in the diet. It really helps them with that mental hurdle because I don't know about you guys, but <clears throat> many of my clients that were suffering and they had this super slow metabolism is because they were scared to death to ever eat anything because That's every right. time they did, it f- felt to them like they just piled it all on. And so over time, they'd go on these binges and then they'd see it go on and then they'd go these hardcore restricts for long periods of time. And so then you have to, and if they're going to, 
if they're going to have long-term success, you've got to help them break through that mentally. And one of the best ways is right out the gates, teaching them, we're going to get strong. We're going to add things to the diet. And that's a huge, huge part of their long-term success. Right. Now, the, the next point, uh, this is just uh, one of the side effects of getting stronger, is it speeds up your metabolism. You know, burning calories manually is hard. It's first off, it's obvious work. Like if I want to burn more calories by moving, well, I got to move a lot. Well, that could be hard to do. It could be inconvenient. I got to schedule time to do that. And moving more, my body eventually learns how to adapt and burn less calories in other ways, either by paring muscle down, reducing activity in other ways, so that my calorie burn start goes back to where it was. This has been proven in study after study. Trying to burn calories manually for fat loss, there's nothing wrong with moving more. Moving more is good for you. But doing it to try to lose weight, it's a losing strategy. Every study done it has been sh it shows this. I've experienced this with clients myself. A much more effective strategy is to get your metabolism to burn more calories on its own. How do you do that? Well, you build muscle. That's it. You, you, what you're doing is you're literally building the machinery that burns a lot of calories. You know, the beauty of this, by the way, for somebody who's listening right now, who's like, oh God, I got to put size on my body. I'm trying to get smaller. Muscle is very dense. If you lost 10 pounds of fat, but gained 10 pounds of muscle, you'd be smaller. About a quarter of the size you would lose, almost a quarter. So it's so much, it's so dense that gaining five pounds of muscle, you're not going to look bigger. You'll feel tighter. You'll feel like much firmer, but you'd have a faster metabolism. Five pounds of muscle on your body done the right way. And I mean real muscle, not just water, glycogen, like actual contractile tissue, right? Gaining five pounds of actual real lean body mass the right way. I mean, you're going to boost, in my experience, I would have someone's metabolism boost by five, 600, 800 calories, depending on the person. That's like an hour of cardio every yeah. day. Just sitting there. Think about what flexibility that just created for you. Oh my God, it's another meal you could eat or you just get leaner eating what you're currently eating. It's like investing money. I, I can put my money somewhere where it makes money for me and I just sit at home while I make money or I could go try and work more hours. You can go ahead and try and work more hours. By the way, your body learns how to tax you more when you do that. It's just like, it's just like you would with taxes. Mm -hmm. But with this, it's tax-free. Think of it that way and it, and it builds for you. Speeding up the metabolism is the most effective strategy for fat loss this is why when you hear me say powerlifting is great for fat loss, this is why. It's one, number one reason. I'm so glad you said that because somebody's going to clip that and they're going to do a counter argument to what you yeah. just said. So I want to arm the trainers and clients out there with this discussion because it's one of the, one of my pet peeves is the research around how, how many calories more your body burns for every pound of muscle you have is there's massive debate around that. Ugh. I've seen it as low as like five or 10 calories a day to as high as like 60 calories a yeah. day. Mm. And arguing over the science of what we have on what exactly is that is not the whole story. The metabolism is far more complex than you'd be able to measure just the, the metabolic rate of one, one pound of tissue. So don't allow some dork who just got out of school who wants to take that clip and argue it and say like, that's not true. Even if you added five pounds of muscle, so it only equate to about 75 calories and 75 no. calories is insignificant because one- we still don't know everything about the metabolism. We're still trying to we're trying to figure it out. Two, there's also huge behavioral changes yeah. that happens to somebody who adds five or ten pounds of muscle to their body. Yeah, they don't okay? measure any of that. They're right. You're. I guarantee anybody listening right now, nothing else changes in your life, but you add five to ten more pounds. Watch how much more you move. Yeah, you know, and watch how much more effective <coughs> you are when you move inside the gym, and how much stronger you are. And there's there's this effect better that, decisions you make uh, nutritionally there's a rippling effect of positive benefits that happen to you metabolically physically physiologically from adding five to ten pounds of muscle on you that is cannot be measured in a lab and compared to fat burns this muscle burns this and unfortunately our community in space will take a clip that i guarantee someone's going to clip that sal you know what and 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 they'll try and make yeah. this argument that you're full of shit or you don't know what you're talking look, about. Trainers and coaches that do reverse dieting with competitors or work with people. They know. Look at their, they, we know this. Yeah. By the way, there's a range of calories you could burn within the same with the same lean body mass. So your body can become more thrifty or less thrifty whether you gain or lose a single pound or not. doesn't matter. Your body can decide to burn more calories, less calories, and there's it's a very complex system. But if you're training to build muscle, you're in the process of building muscle, you're feeding your body to do so, all those things point towards 
becoming less thrifty with calories means you have a faster metabolism. I've had people's metabolism boost even more than so the numbers I, I listen, that I mentioned. I, the story yeah. I share about Melissa Wolf, you can find her on Instagram and ask her if this is a true story or not. It's the last person that I train. If you based it off of what the research says on pounds of muscle, it would be impossible for me to have increased her calories to what it did. But not only did we do so, we did so and then won a show by doing that. Yeah. And when I got her, she was at like 1,900 calories or less. We worked her all the way up to like 27, 2,800 calories. Little tiny little thing. And we did that in a relatively short period of time. She most certainly did not put on 50 pounds of muscle <laughs> in that period of time. So where did all that extra yeah. calorie burning come from? And it wasn't me increasing her activity like crazy because before prep, I had her doing zero cardio. So go explain that to me. It's like... We don't, we haven't quite fully wrapped our brains around exactly all the different mechanisms that it's affecting and how it works. I can tell you from firsthand though, I've done this hundreds of times with clients. It's extremely effective and I have seen metabolisms roaring. And even myself, you guys have heard me share the journey on here that there's been times on this podcast in the last eight years when at 5,500 calories, I would lose weight. Yeah. If I eat 5,500 calories right now, I'll pile on like crazy. I can't even eat over 3,000 right now because I'm, in a, I'm a total different person right now. So that's how much you can radically shift the metabolism. So don't let some dork tell you that's not true. <laughs> I think they call them dorks. It also, look, powerlifting training or training for strength also discourages overtraining. One of the, the, the biggest hurdles for anybody starting a fitness program, especially women, because they tend to want weight loss more so than men even, is that they overtrain. They think if some exercise is good, more is better. That's not true at all. The right dose will give you the best results. More than that will give you worse results. Less than that will give you rest, less results. So how does powerlifting discourage overtraining? If you overtrain, you're not going to get stronger. You'll get weaker. Mm -hmm. If you're training hard, and you're not getting stronger, and then you add more training, and then you start to get weaker, uh-oh, I must be overtraining. I got to back off. If you're training for strength, this is one of the times, look, if you're training for the mirror, if you're just doing subjective, right, it'll be very hard for me to get you to back off on your training and even realize the benefit. You'll look in the mirror and be like, I think I look better. I'm not sure, but I am training less. But if I have you back off your training and you go up 15 pounds in your deadlift, it's right there. Oh, you were overtraining. Look, you got stronger from training less because you were overtraining before. And, and just to put it more clearly, training for strength encourages proper workout programming. You can't train improperly. You can't have a crappy workout program and consistently get stronger. You can't fool the body when it comes to strength for too long. Maybe initially, when you first get started, for the first few months, you'll get stronger doing almost anything. But then you'll stop and you'll not get stronger unless you have a well-written, well-planned workout. And powerlifting encourages it because, again, it's objective. The reason why this is such a strong point is because, one, I think this is extremely common across the board. I think a, a, a lot of people, especially fitness enthusiasts, uh, grossly overtrain. I especially think a lot of women overtrain in relation to the calories they consume Definitely. because the most common move is to cut calories and increase activity. And when they mm -hmm. don't see the body moving or changing, they just keep increasing. Add, add, add. Yeah, they just keep increasing the activity and reducing the calories and have no idea they're getting further and further in that direction of overtraining. And to your point about getting stronger, it's it's so objective that even if you got a little bit of newbie gains because you just started by overtraining and under eating, eventually that kit catches up really quick and you have to solve that in order to see yourself get stronger. Well, and one of the other things I love about this style of training is it just highlights the importance of rest and how uh, yes. a lot of these other programs that most women that I would train uh, would uh, basically they were doing cardio with weights in every single session, every single workout they've ever done. Uh, and that's just because of what's out there in the marketplace. Uh, it's, it's this busy, do more, more, more in order to, to keep leaning out and get to your desired outcome where this just shows you how you can increase strength and you, you take longer rest periods in between completely different mindset shift. And then hopefully that then translates going back in the importance of rest in between sets. Right. Um, now you guys mentioned this earlier, but uh, I love talking about the empowering feeling that getting stronger produces for women. This was one of my favorite comments that I would get from female clients is they would come in and they would say something like, um, you know, I had one, one woman that I trained, she was this really petite executive and she would travel a lot. And I remember she came in, this was after maybe four or five months of training. 
She's like, oh my God, uh, the craziest thing happened. I'm like, what? She's like, I didn't need to ask. She was real small. She's like five foot. I didn't need to ask anyone help for help putting my suitcase in the overhead compartment on the plane. And I kind of chuckled. I was a young trainer. She said, you have no idea, Sal. She goes, I travel all the time for work. I always have to ask some guy or flight attendant to help me. She's like, yeah, it's almost like I'm dependent. She's like, I did it myself. And it's because I'm so much stronger. And I thought about that. Like, what would that feel like? Right. Mm. I've had other female clients say things like, oh my God, I was holding both my kids all day long and I didn't get tired. Or I was, I picked up four grocery bags or the water delivery came and it's, I didn't have to wait for my husband. I picked it up and did it myself. To feel stronger is to feel more able-bodied. It's empowering. It feels incredible. When you get a, when, when a woman can squat her body weight or more than her body weight for the first time, and she looks at that bar and you say, you know, that was 135 pounds. And they're like, oh my God, I just lifted 130. I remember I had a female client lift her husband's body weight. I asked her, how much does your husband <laughs> yeah. weigh? She's like 185 pounds. Yeah. I'm like, that. he just squatted. And her eyes, she's like, oh my God, I, I squatted my husband? Like, that's insane. It's an incredibly empowering feeling to get stronger. And a lot of women don't experience this because workouts that are specially designed for women don't talk about strength like it's this, it's almost like the side effect, like, oh, burn body fat, sweat, get sore. You'll get a little stronger too. It's not the primary effect. Training for powerlifting, it's the primary effect. And let me tell you, it feels amazing. Yeah, I think it's important that the coaches and trainers learn to highlight this and point this out more. I know you're going to get a lot of clients that come in and tell you that they need to lose weight and they want to do that, but shifting, helping them shift their mindset in this because it's nice. You have a client who's got to lose 30, 40, 50 pounds and you got a journey ahead of you. And one of the things that you can hang on to or celebrate with them are these strength gain wins along the way. Mm -hmm. And if you teach them and un help them understand how impactful and important that is and how much that's a signal that you're doing the things right, right? You got to let them know that. Like, listen, if we are eating like we're supposed to, we're taking care of your body stress management wise, you're getting good rest. We're feeding the body the nutrients it needs to grow and build. You're getting stronger. And if you're not getting stronger, it's because we're missing on those things. So even though I know we have this 40 pound journey we got to get to, we're hitting some really important milestones right now. I want you to know that. So make sure you celebrate those wins and communicate that to them because it's incredibly empowering to let your client know, even if they have this big journey ahead of them, that they're already starting to compile wins. Yeah, That's getting stronger just translates to so many things. I mean, it, it's this confidence builder. It's it and it bleeds in everything. It's it's overcoming any kind of uh, other uh, ad adversity that you're going to face, uh, you know, at work or relationships or anything else. It's just one of those factors of, of training. I don't think uh, people put enough emphasis on it. It's, yeah. it's all weight loss. Agreed. All right. Th this, this, this last point I love because uh, one of my favorite things to do with female clients who struggled with uh, eating issues, dysfunctional eating, body image issues, um, female clients that uh, just had challenges with, uh, you know, the, the way I was trying to train them because they always had worked out a particular way. They needed to get sore and sweat a lot. Otherwise it wasn't effective is I would encourage them to sign up for a local powerlifting meet. Now, why would I do that? Because they had a, a date that was set. They were training for it and helped them become objective and single-minded with hitting their goal. And then when they got there, the powerlifting community is so supportive and fun it's the it's the best it's one of the best if not the best strength training community that exists. Yeah. Now bodybuilding, physique, bikini, very subjective. It can definitely be fun and supportive, but boy do people really sacrifice themselves and their health going into it because uh, the metrics tend to be very subjective, right? It's how you look. Powerlifting is very different. They're very very supportive. It's very fun and you don't sacrifice. I mean, of course at the extreme levels health is sacrifice. I'm talking about like, you know, local level type of deal. But training into a powerlifting meet, you're your healthiest the day of the meet. You're your strongest the day of the meet. Um, and again, it's a wonderful community. And I've had a few clients do this and get the support and they couldn't believe it. Like, my God, people were cheering for me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not even competitive. I just did it for myself. But all these people were like so excited, you know, for me to, to, to lift the weight off the floor. It was so awesome. Well, I mean, community is always important, and I think in training, right? I think just think that whether you find that community within your family and your close friends, or you go outside of that and you look for it, 
and your comparison to bodybuilding, well, what's so accurate about that is that you're right. Like, I don't care what anyone says, bodybuilding is not healthy. There's a there's a very healthy aspect to strength training or powerlifting, right? There's a very healthy. Is there an ex, is there extremes and where it becomes unhealthy? Of course, there's extremes. But generally speaking, the sport of powerlifting, getting ready for that, prepping for that, all the way to the day of the, your competition, you're probably at your healthiest. Mm -hmm. You're strong. You're well fed. You're not depleting yourself or anything like that. Uh, bodybuilding a little bit different in that case. But I mean, this is also what I think what uh, CrossFit, why CrossFit was so big. Like they, they nailed this. They, they figured this piece out of this, you know, building community around the big lifts. I mean, it's literally that it's yeah. literally these boxes all over the country are these little, you know, hole in the wall garage type gyms that focus on all the major barbell lifts and they have incredible community and it's why it's so successful. Well, I, I really, I, re I really I got it. I wish the trend was not a group of female friends getting together and saying, let's do a bikini contest together. So we could all get in shape for summer. I wish it was like, hey, let's sign up for a powerlifting competition. That'd be awesome. You know what's funny about that? They would look, generally speaking, they'd get better results. More women would get better results working out together for a powerlifting competition than the bikini or physique or sure. bodybuilding sure, competition. A lot of people have developed more body image issues, eating disorders, or gotten worse through the get on stage and look and have the judges judge you type of sport versus I got to go lift a heavy weight. I would love to see that trend of mm -hmm. women getting together and saying, we're all training for this competition yeah. coming up in August or whatever. Just a bunch of muscle mommies out it, there. It would, be, it would be super amazing. Now, if we've convinced you, look, here's the deal. Uh, I'm glad. Also, we have a program specifically designed for powerlifting training, and it literally will take you to the day of competition if you decide to do so. It's called MAPS Powerlift, and because of this episode, it's half off, 50% off. You can find it at mapspowerlift.com. Use the coupon code WOMENPOWER to get that 50% off. 